thank you to Canada House and the um, Northern Miner for this opportunity to give you an update at what I believe is a very exciting time for particularly the Star Orion South Diamond project. So without further ado, I should say that all diamonds in the presentation are derived from our kimberlites in Saskatchewan. Uh, safe harbor, obviously there's lots of words for you to look at there very carefully. Um, the presentation summary, I won't go through this in detail, but we want to look at the location, the diamonds, a PEA, comparison with other mines, diamond supply outlook very brief, uh, project Falcon activities, that's the name that Rio Tinto applies to the project, bulk sampling and brownfields exploration, and then our uh, Newmont Gold, Corpora Gold Corp Corporation as our significant shareholder. Uh, the Canadian diamond scene, you probably know this pretty well, uh, Ekati and Divik up in the north with Gacho Quay, Victor in the James Bay Lowlands that has had its last haulage of ore in April, and the final diamond sale I think will take place next month. Uh, Renard in um, Quebec, and then newcomers on the scene, Chidliac will be developed by De Beers up on Baffin Island, and Naujat with North Arrow in the very far north. Unlike all of these projects, our project is accessible in the breadbasket of Saskatchewan, just off paved highways. As we see on this map, all the high red roads are paved highways. The project is 20 kilometers within the Fort Alacorn Forest, just off the highway, and most importantly, just off the power grid of uh, Sask Power. Uh, the claim positions is the yellow claims cover 100% holding by Star Diamond Corporation. The green claims cover an area of geophysics that was flown by Rio Tinto late last year, and they just put those claims in place to make sure that there wasn't any wildcat staking that took place. Uh, the two Kimberlites marked in blue star at the south end and Orion South, just about a kilometer north of that, have been evaluated in great detail. Um, the project is in very good standing from an environmental point of view in that the federal approval of the project was provided in uh, uh, December 2014, and last year in October, we received the approval from the provincial government, so the project is in very good standing in that respect. Uh, the principal economic driver of the project is the attractive diamond population. There's a high diamond price driven by diamond quality, diamond color, shape, and most specifically size very coarse size frequency distributions for diamond parcels from both the Star and Orion South Kimberlites. As we can see, the weighted average price for Star, looking at all the units and the contributions thereto, is $210 a carat, which is more than twice the world average, which in 2017 was $93 a carat. It might have been a little bit lower last year. Uh, 169 at Orion South. Orion South has a considerably smaller sample than Star, and overall $190 a carat. Very strong diamond price. Um, we'll jump on a bit further. High value stones, um, notably the most valuable stone being the 11.96 carat stone at the bottom of that slide. A type 2A, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Over $11,000 a carat. It's a D color, makeable stone, and of a very nice quality. The highest value stone in Orion South. Light fancy yellow, uh, very good stone, also makeable, $8,000 a carat. Very interesting to see the yellow color. There's quite a bit of yellow in the production, or in the, in the the evaluation parcel, and also, very importantly, there is a significant contribution of internally flawless octahedra, as we see at the top of the screen there. Um, there is very high color in this parcel. As I've mentioned, type 2A, these are nitrogen-free diamonds. We'll talk more about those on the next slide. And then there is some yellow at the bottom. Uh, the brown can euphemistically be called 
uh, either champagne colored diamonds or in darker cases, chocolate colored diamonds, but certainly there is a market for this product as well. More than 96% of the product from these two kimberlites will likely end up in jewelry. In terms of type 2A stones, type 2A stones are nitrogen, boron, and helium free. They only have carbon in their crystal structure, and they can be the most perfect gin and tonic white, sometimes brown, and in very rare cases, pink. The highest value stones recovered in the world are all type 2A goods. Type 2A goods are exceptionally rare, and in a recent study by the GIA, only 1.3% of all the diamonds they graded in uh, 2016 were type 2As. However, the highest type 2A producer in the world is the Letseng mine in Lesotho. It has some 29% of its product falls in that class. And as we can see with, this, uh, uh, with the star kimberlite, we are very close, ranging between 25 and 28%, depending on the kimberlite unit, and some 14% in Orion South. So a very strong contribution of these stones that can be a very good color and a very good size. In April last year, we conducted a, pre a preliminary economic assessment. Uh, we had published a feasibility study in 2011. We were then able to revise and uh, expand our resource in 2015. And as a consequence of that, we needed to get a metric into the marketplace so that we could discuss these under the rules of 43101. Uh, so potential plant feed of 270 million tons, massive ore tonnage, uh, relatively low grade, 14 CPHT carrots per 100 tons on average, ranging between about 10 and 20 carrots per 100 tons, uh, resulting in recoverable carrots of 66 million over a 34-year mine life. As you can see, at a 7% discount rate, uh, even after tax and royalties, we have a $2 billion NPV and a 19% IRR, a very attractive financials. Pre-production cost of $1.4 billion, which we've lowered from our feasibility study significantly. Initial payback period of 3.4 years. Once the mine gets going, it produces money very quickly. The lowering of the pre-production capital cost was principally driven by, as you see on the one side of the slide, the removal of the overburden, which is 100 meters in most cases, by bucket wheel excavators. We had Tacroff from the former East Germany work very closely with us, uh, produce machines that can run at 20,000 tons per hour, and a very low unit cost of between 39 and 41 cents Canadian per ton to get the ore from the pit onto the waste pile. We also revised the plant. With these large diamonds, we need to have a system that recovers diamonds without breakage. Most importantly, we've worked closely with Tomra in Germany to use their XRT, X-ray transmission sorting machines, which recover diamonds with more or less 100% reliability. Um, if we compare our numbers with a number of deposits, I won't go through all of these, but we have to remember that unlike gold deposits where there's a gold price that's quoted on a daily basis or an hourly basis, a, a diamond deposit has tons, grade, and the resulting carrots, but most importantly, the price. And the price is unique to the kimberlite that brings that to surface. And you can see there is a great variation in the prices and the consequent tonnages. And so you can mix and match these numbers and come up with economic mines with a very different sets of values as seen in that table. Uh, diamond production statistics, uh, shown by Paul Zimniski, who is an analyst that operates out of New York. He shows that as we move into the future, uh, natural diamond supply 
will fall. There is a light colored dashed line that goes off there if this large deposit, Luashi, that's being brought into production by Alrosa and the Angolan government comes on stream in a big way. But certainly natural rough will become rarer with time as some of the landmark mines, particularly such as Argyle, come off stream and that will happen next year. Um, Rio Tinto has looked at this project for a long time and in 2017 they signed an option to joint venture agreement with us. They can earn up to a 60% interest in the project by conducting evaluation to the tune of some $80 million. Um, that process is now well underway and we are about to embark on a very exciting bulk sampling program in the next few weeks. Um, there has been a lot of work done, pilot holes of the overburden, pilot holes of the kimberlite, cutter soil mixing to stabilize the unconsolidated sand. Uh, the rigs have all been delivered to site. The, the uh, plant foundations have been established. The plant is being built. Roads have been upgraded. And concurrent with this, Rio are also doing a very hard look at all of the other 60 kimberlites in this region to prioritize them for future work. Here we can see the personnel camp that's been expanded to uh, uh, accommodate 150 people. Uh, here is a core warehouse and logging facility. We have a very comprehensive archive of past drilling and Rio Tinto is certainly using that. Um, there will be 10 bulk sampling positions on the star kimberlite shown in red. The black lines are the previous underground bulk sampling, which recovered some 75,000 tons, 10,000 carats from star. And the blue squares are former large diameter drill holes. Uh, the Rio has cited these bulk sample holes in close proximity to the underground and previous large diameter drill holes for confirmation of grade. The same takes place on Orion South uh, with 20 drill holes on Orion South to increase the size of the diamond parcel on Orion South. This work will be performed, the bulk samples will be collected or excavated by a trench cutter bulk sampling rig. It's an enormous piece of equipment produced by Bauer in Germany, weighs some 310 tons. It cuts a rectangular hole 3.2 by 1.5 meters in diameter. Every 10 meters of advance gives you 100 tons of kimberlite and it is designed to sample to 250 meters below surface. Uh, this program is about to commence. Here is the cutter rig in close proximity to what will be the first hole. The uh, CSM rig, the cutter soil mixing rig, is in the background. That rig has now already been demobilized from site. You can see that happening over here. And in the background, we have the uh, sample storage unit, the big white building, and then next to that, a big floor for the laydown of the plant designed by Consulmet in South Africa, uses the latest technology, uh, both a combination of XRT, HPGR, and DMS to recover diamonds and specifically designed to minimize and reduce diamond breakage. Uh, here we can see the, the floor of the plant being cast. Rio Tinto has gone in in a big way and are doing a very good job of getting this done. Another view of the plant, the plant was delivered in those 26 containers that we see in the foreground. The foundation is complete. This picture was taken uh, just a week ago and the plant uh, started uh, assembly last week. Uh, the outline of the plant, I won't go through this, but for those who are interested in these things, certainly this is available, the entire presentation on our website. You can review this at your leisure. And again, I can't emphasize the importance that we must have an iterative crushing process to minimize diamond breakage. And with the XRT, take the big stones out early. Obviously, the big stones are drivers of the mine. Uh, future upside, large contiguous diamond bearing kimberlites, Star and Orion South have been extensively evaluated and uh, 
There will be a lot more work done in future on the other kimberlites. Attractive diamond parcel, environmental approval, accessible, most important. Saskatchewan is a good mining jurisdiction. The PEA has strong numbers. Uh, Star Diamond Corporation has consolidated all of the claims uh, that cover the Kimberlites under their 100% jurisdiction. Rio Tinto has an option to earn an interest. Um, Rio Tinto refers to the project as Project Falcon. And as you can see, the Fort a la Corn is hidden inside the Falcon. Um, collecting additional bulk samples to f confirm grades. The Orbit program will look at the other Kimberlites. Um, company is led by Kenneth McNeil. I'm responsible for the technical side, Greg Shylock, our financial officer, and we have two project geologists who have extremely good experience and probably the best understanding of these four dollar corn kimberlites. Um, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Exciting times ahead for Star Diamond Corporation.